Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, week nine, and we are getting very close to uh, the end of semester. So, uh, a very quick summary of where do we stand. We are familiar with two important um, structural entities, one of them being trust, which is made of the simple bar members. They are longitudinally loaded. The second class is BEAM. BEAM is a very detailed uh, structure. It's been used in many different applications. And once the BEAM is loaded, the radius of curvature changes. So you always expect the BEAM to become curved in, um, with the changing the radius of curvature. That is how the loads are being carried. But as a structural engineer, your responsibility is to find out whether the structure is integral does it take the load or is it gonna collapse that's a difficult question to answer so we are making preparation for you to um, be able making that judgment so the first important prerequisite was to find out internal forces so we know that there are three types of internal forces in the member uh, these forces are being shear axial load bending moment. So two of them are mostly important. I mean, if you see a bridge, Westgate bridge, it's very unlikely that the Westgate bridge is loaded axially. It's mostly uh, is by the action of the shear or shear would be a big truck moving that, that makes, makes a point load. It makes a shear critical. But bending moment is the overall action of the distributed load. How does it make locally to develop bending moment. So there are few uh, obstacles here. The first one is we don't know whether shear is critical or bending moment is critical. And then why don't we um, doubt that? Because these quantities are of different types. Shear is in Newton, bending moment is in Newton meter. And worse than that is when bending moment becomes maximum, shear is zero. When shear is non-zero, bending moment could be zero. So they don't happen at the same spot. And another complexity is um, it's not enough to judge the performance simply based on the internal load. You could apply the same internal load to the wood, to the steel, right? So material makes a difference. And also section properties. Section properties, I mean the geometrical properties. They are critical. So a beam which has a large I, and when I say I, I mean second moment of inertia. And, and moment of inertia is much like the torque. Torque, you can't talk about the torque without talking about the point of rotation. Whenever there is a torque, there is a, there is a point of rotation. The same with the bending moment. Whenever there is a bending moment, there should be an axis of base on which the bending moment is defined. Because you could have parallel axis uh, defined for the same same object. So we are getting there. So you know how to find the internal forces, two techniques. If you want to find this locally, you do the free body diagram. All right, free body diagram is only suitable for a spot identification of internal load. I give you the point, ask what is the internal load here? You apply the free body diagram method. If I want you to plot. The plot is most feasible if you do by method of equation. Method of equation is uh, distributed load is W of X, changes with X. V of X is the, has an integral relationship with the W, and bending moment has an integral relationship with the shear, shear force. So this is, you identify how many zones are there, you find out the reactions, and zone by zone, you define your coordinate system and go on with driving the equation and plotting them. The plot give you the convenience of, by looking at the plot, you can find out where the critical point is. And sadly, the complication is more. And then when I say more, uh, let me explain. So yes, we know that the internal forces depend on the longitudinal coordinate. 
which we define this as x. And when we define the new parameters, the reason we define the stress, a stress is the internal load intensity. So why did we introduce the internal stress? Because internal forces are not comparable. When you translate the internal force into the internal stress, they become comparable. Both of them, they are Newton meter, Newton per square meter, they're comparable. Um, the, the problem is internal stress is not uniform. So here, this is a beam and side by side, I show you the cross section. So the cross section could be something like a hollow section. And okay, what is my X axis? This is my X axis. This is Y axis. And then here we, def we, we talked about a neutral plane. Neutral plane is where the material is not under tension or compression. If I change this one, if I bend that one, right? So the upper fibers, you expect them to be under compression. The lower fibers, you expect them to be under tension. So between compression, tension, negative, positive, there should be a zero. So that zero is a plane, is a plane which is passing through the center of area of the cross section. So the first step for every beam analysis, you have to find the center of area. So that we did a little bit yesterday. It's not difficult. This is something to do with calculus, something to do with the prior subjects. And once you have this, the moment of area has to be calculated by taking that neutral place as a reference. All right, so that's, that's the second thing. All right, now, I mentioned there are complexities here. The complexity is, I know that my internal forces, they do change by X. But when I translate them to a stress, so let's assume a stress is shown by sigma or by a Greek letter tau. So these are two uh, internal stresses. They not only depend on X, they also depend on Y. Does that make sense to everyone? So X and Y. So far, I know the variation of the internal forces by um, So when you look at internal forces, you know how they change with X, but these have to be translated into internal stresses. Once you translate, you notice that, look, upper fibers are under tension, compression, lower fibers are under um, tension. So if I define this as Y, I call this a transverse direction. So these are not only the function of X, also function of Y. So your tough question, your $1 million question is someone giving you a bridge and ask you, tell me, if a crack grows, what would be the starting uh, point? Give me the X and Y coordinate of the point at which the crack might grow. That's the most critical part. Not only you have to spot it horizontally, you have to spot it vertically as well. So I'm, I'm telling you all these stories to make jobs easier. You, you have a justification. Look, I'm going through all these hell mathematical things, it, it pays. Uh, after doing that, I'm answering a tough question, right? It, if, that, if that was easy, everyone would have done it. it. It takes someone like you to be a structural engineer after doing all this hardship. All right, so I foresee. Let's, um, now that we know it, um, let's remind ourselves that for a arbitrary shape like this one, the moment of inertia is a key parameter to calculate. I know that the performance of the beam is reversely proportional with the eye. The larger the eye, the stronger the beam, no matter what material. 
but to calculate i in a, I mean, from scientific perspective, I might give you a very odd shape and ask you calculate i. This is a calculus um, problem to, to do that integral. But as an engineer, you most often end up with composite shapes. Composite shapes, they can be decomposed into easier shape like rectangle, circle. And then the thing is, there is not a unique way of discretizing a shape or decomposing a shape. So you have to be smart to pick the easiest uh, decomposition. Easiest decomposition, I mean, you, wa you want to avoid change of the reference axis. Because, because by referring to the table, look, if I decide to decompose that shape, one of the shape, let me assume that one of the shape is this one. All right. So I refer to the table. Where is the standard axis, the reference for, for this? this the, the standard for that is a, a plane which is passing through its center, right? But that being used inside this context, my new reference is where? My new reference is the center of area for the entire shape. So in another word, I have to find out this position with respect to any reference that is Y bar. So that is for the composite shape. Now, even if I bring that from a table, I have to pay a penalty for that because, because in the table, the bending moment is defined with that dotted line. Now, to translate this to be used inside that structure, you have to pay a penalty. And the penalty is you need to find out how much distance is between them. That is, you call it Y, D, whatever. D square it and multiply that by the area of this one. That is the penalty you pay. So this penalty is added to the value you grab from the table. From the table, you find I bar. And then that penalty now, this value is addable to the rest of the decomposite, uh, decomposed part here. So having said that, let's uh, try this problem together. And here, OK, can I ask you to try this for yourself before we, we do that together? Right? Okay, to help you, I mean, I said there are few options to decompose that one. One uh, option is to take this rectangle as number one, this one as number one, and number two is this one. And then number three is the yellow triangle. And the last one is the small yellow triangle to be subtracted from the first one. I'm not saying that's the only way of decomposing it, but, but if, you, if you want the, the solutions to be comparable, you can do the same strategy here.
All right, first step, let's find out the um, reference or the neutral plane for the composite shape. Like I said, I'm going to take this one as, I'm going to take this one as component number one. That is as component number two. And then one big triangle, one little triangle. We subtract it. So that is a one, two, three, four. So I will be writing this as y bar is equal to y1 a1 plus y2 a2 plus y3 a3 minus y4 a4. So you know why by the last one is minus because that's a little triangle subtract that from the big triangle and in the denominator you will have a1 plus a2 plus a3 minus a4 so let's plug the numbers with a1 a1 being that bottom triangle what is y for for that y for that is 10 and what is the area of that 20 times 80, that's 1,600, right? And what about the second triangle? The second triangle, 100 is the total. So with respect to that, the Y would be 50, right? So that is plus 50. And the area is 100 times 20, that is 2,000. And what about the triangle? The, the large triangle, the center of area is one third from the base. So the base being 100 take away 20, that's 80. 80 divided by three, plus 20. So the centroid of the big triangle, that is 100 take away 20, that's 80. 80, one third of 80. And then on top of that is a 20. This is 46. Let's take it 47. Plus 47 times the area of the triangle. The area of the triangle is 80 multiplied by 80 divided by 2. That is uh, 3,200. And finally, the little triangle, which comes with a negative sign. So what is the centroid of the little triangle? So that is 60 divided by that's 20 20 plus 20 that is 40 40 is the centroid with respect to here and the area of that is 60 multiplied by 60 divided by 2 that is 60 multiplied by 30 that's 1800 Now, in the denominator, you have 1,600 plus 2,000 plus 3,200 minus 1,800. And if you work out that, uh, this will be 3867.
Now, that is just the beginning. Now we managed to find out the reference, the neutral plane for the composite section. What do we do next? The next is we have to bring all the I values for individual component from the table, but the table, um, so let's, let me make a, in, in this type of problem, I suggest you form a table that is to avoid confusion and making sure everything would be All right, so here I put the numbers. Number one is that rectangle. Number two is the second rectangle. Three is the large triangle. And four is the little triangle. All right, so the most important parameters to be included here, that is AI. That's the area of each triangle. So A1 um, is a1 is 1,600, and A2 is 2,000, A3 is 3,200, and A4 is 1,800. Now, next column, I put D. D is the distance between, um, D is the distance between center of or, or the neutral axis from the table. This is from parallel parallel axis. So in the first one, that is my line. That is the neutral plane. What is the distance between the first neutral axis with dotted line? 38, you have to take away 10 from that. This is 28.88. What about the second one? The second one in the table, I have the neutral plane of that, that vertical second member here. So that is right at 50 from the bottom. 50 from the bottom compared to 38. Just let's subtract them. 50 take away 38 points. 67. That is 33. 33, 67. Or maybe I'm wrong. 50, take a, no, no, that was not right. This is not right. Yeah. 50, take away 38. Point. 67, 11.33. And for this triangle, the neutral plane for the large triangle is where? For that uh, is 80 divided by 3 plus 20. Eighty divided by 3 plus 20. 46, uh, this is a little bit above the center of the shape so that take away from 3867 that is eight eight mil and for the little triangle the little triangle that is 20 plus 20 40 40 take away
for this for the third one so let's let's calculate this again for the third one the, the centroid of the large triangle that is 80 divided by 3 that is from the base right 80 divided by 3 divided by 3 which is 26 26 right plus 20 plus 20 that is 46 and that 46 take take away from 38 yeah. i got eight is that right yeah. okay eight is right and now with the last one is a little triangle the little triangle is 20 plus 20 is 40 40 take away from 38 40 take away from 38.67 that is 1.33 All right, the reason I ask you to form this table, because then you can come back and check your solution. If you make a mistake, that, that makes it easier to, and then also if you are using Excel formula sheet, this is suitable for Excel formula sheet. So here, if that was Excel sheet, all I have to do was here, I needed to construct I D I S squared. So with the Excel, I put a formula and that does the calculation for me. So here I plug the numbers here, 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 and here eventually at the bottom i write a formula if i need total areas i sum them up if i want to subtract these from the rest i write a formula over there and okay so what, what else do i need also i need the uh, a standard moment of inertia a standard moment of inertia for the first one i write this as i bar so for the first shape is 1 over 12 and 80 times 20 cubed, correct? That is for the first shape. That's a triangle, sorry, that, that rectangle with respect to that neutral axis, local neutral plane. That is 1 over 12 BH3. B is 80, H is 20. BH3. Do you remember the formula? When we had a rectangle, and with this rectangle, if this being B, this is H, I is equal to 1 over 12 BH3. Do you remember that from yesterday? Okay. So we do the same thing for the second triangle. It's, sorry, second rectangle. That is. 1 over 12 bh3 b is 20 and h is 100 and for the triangle so what was the formula for the triangle you remember 36 was it that is B H three divided by thirty six. So that is one over thirty six B H three. B is eighty and H is again eighty, eighty cubed. And for the little one, that is one over thirty six and B is B is sixty. And H is 60, 60 Q. So here you find out the H, and then here you find I bar plus AI DI squared. And then whatever you calculate would be filled in these tables. And eventually, here at the bottom, you have the sigma. So this sigma is I1 plus I2 plus I3 minus I4. 
because the last one is negative. You are subtracting this one. So here, for example, sigma is A1 plus A2 plus A3 minus A4. And the same for, for everything else. So uh, you have access to the detailed solution in the slide with the numbers, if you want to check them. Here I tried to show you what the system is. This is called the tabular system. Tabular system is very useful for the exam. It, mm, otherwise, you find this to be very um, confusing and mess, the total mess. So in summary, these are what you got. I mean, here they designated the offset by letter of v, y. We, we use d. So d is y might be confusing with the distance from here. Um, so d is how, what is the distance between neutral axis from the table and that of the composite shape? That that we designated. With, so here instead of y, we use d. D is squared. So the unit for that is millimeter to the power of four or meter to the power of four. But with the stress, you keep all the forces in Newton and keep all the dimensions in millimeter. As a result, when you calculate the stress, the, the stress is reported as megapascal. So megapascal is the unit of the stress. That is when you keep all the forces in Newton and the area into millimeter. Right, so that give you megapascal. If you keep Newton meter, that give you Pascal. Let's go to page 322. And and the problem we try is number 18. Okay, problem 18, I mean, you can do this in a dumb way or in a smart way. Uh, I'm sure you choose the smart way. So what do I mean by that? Dumb or smart is how you decompose the shape. You can do it in an easy way or <coughs> difficult way. Both of them should give you the same answer, but let's see if if someone can suggest a, a smart decomposition. So big rectangle, a small angle right so because both of them they have their neutral planes coincided and you don't you would avoid the theorem of parallel axis you don't have to add a penalty for that but if someone wants to do the down way you can make one rectangle here one rectangle there one at the top but one at the bottom so that would require some some so that is uh one over 12 so i total i is equal to for the big rectangle that is 1 over 12 b b is 360 and h is 200 and that take away from 1 over 12 B is 300 and H is 200 take away 60, which is 140. So 
So that is a large triangle. That is a large triangle and minus the small triangle. This is a small triangle. Okay, any question? So next we go to page 323 and number 83. Let's try 86. Okay, so that is my decomposition scenario. I call this A1, A2, A3, and that is A1 plus A2 minus A3. That is the decomposition. And here we simply sort everything with a table. Even, even finding the center of area, the table can help you. So how? Uh, that, that is how. Just um, Okay, in the first row, we calculate the area of each AI and how many members? One, two, three. So for number one, the area is 200 times 300. That is 6,000. For the second, is 60,000, yeah, thank you, 60,000. For second shape, that is 100 times, uh, sorry, that is 150 times 300 divided by two, that is 150 squared. Two 
And for the circle, that is pi r squared. So 75 squared multiplied by pi. That is 1,671. Okay, so that is, we have the areas. Uh, the next, we need to write the Y bar for each. So that is the Y bar for each. For the first one, Y bar, I mean, I take the, my dot M here at the uh, bottom, this X axis is my dot M. So for the first one, the Y bar is 150. For the second one, the Y bar is 100, one third from the base. For the third one, the Y bar is 150. Okay, so what I need is the product of A. Uh, that is the triangle. Yeah. So this is 300 the total. Uh, 300, yeah, 300, one third from the base, yeah. one third from the base. So now we define a new term that is AI multiplied by Y bar I. So this is a new term we define. And that is what you do. So that's multiplied by 150. This is 2000. Six hundred fifty one for um, so that is two thousand. So this one is twenty two five, and for this one is <coughs> sixty thousand times one fifty. That is the top one should be larger, is it? I got nine Let's just try again. Sorry, Sixty thousand. Uh, multiply by one fifty. Yeah, nine nine million. Thank you. Now, um, 
I also need the summation of AI. Um, yes, summation goes at the bottom. That is I need to have Y bar calculated. Y bar is um, A1, Y1 plus A2, Y2 minus A3, Y3 divided by A1 plus A2 minus A3. And that, anyone calculated that? So that's not a big deal. This is plus. Um, what did we get? Y bar. One three. One three eight. Seventy. 77. All right. So does it make sense? Uh, we expect this one to be above this one or below? It has to be below because, because that triangle is uh, lumped at the bottom. So it makes sense to me that it should be smaller than 150. It, it makes sense, the number you got. Feel free to try that yourself. Um, so the next thing we do is for each shape, uh, we need to find out the penalty. And the penalty, the key term is bi. So here, let me draw a line. So this line, according to Nguyen, that. No, that, that doesn't make uh, You made a mistake somewhere. So do it again, Nguyen. Yep. One three from beginning. One three two point six five. Correct. All right. Thank you for that. So this this Y bar is one thirty two point oh five according to Nguyen, and that also makes sense because this is below the center. 
So I'm going to show that here because uh, this is Y bar. And now for the first shape, uh, you have D being 150 take away from this number. 150 take away from 132.05. That is 17.95. For the triangle, that is 100 from here, and 100 take away from that number. This is 32, 32.05. And for the circle, uh, that is equal to um, 150. All right, so the next um, column, that would be di squared. And the next column would be di squared multiplied by ai. And the last column, the last column is the i value you get from the table. The i value you get from the table, I call this i bar. For the first one is 1 over 12 and bh3. b is 200 and h is 300. For the triangle, that is 1 over 36 multiplied by B is 150 and H is 300. And for the circle, I think circle was P over 64 D something um, I by 4, R to the power of 4. That is I for the circle. All right, so that is I divided by 4 and 75 to the power of 4. So now here you will have the summation of so here, um, for example, I1 is equal to I bar 1 plus A1 B1 squared. And here we have summation of I bar I plus minus, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, this is plus plus i from 1 to 3, uh, di ai. And that, if I expand that, it will be total i is equal to i1 plus i2 minus i3. The third one, yeah. that is 
pi over 4 r to the power of 4. Uh, so sorry, for the di. Right? For the di. Di is the distance of, yeah, well, so you have it here, and that measure to, okay, yeah. I think I made a mistake. Yeah, that, the same yeah, that. that would be take away from uh, 150. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that. But this is not right. 150 is not correct. And that is 150 take away 17.95. Yeah, the same as the rectangle, isn't it? Yeah. The same as the rectangle. So this is the solution to a problem we had yesterday. If you want to, um, the decomposition is one triangle, one big rectangle, and one circle to be taken away. Now let's try, that is six, 91. 691, we do that together also. Okay, the question is, how do we want to decompose this one? Is there an easy way? Let's, everyone, think about that. And let me know your thoughts.
Okay, I think the one strategy is this one plus two times this plus one time this one. So I call this A1, A2, A3. And again, we go with the method of uh, table and the bottom line is X axis. So from X axis, you want to find Y bar first. So, um, One, two, three. So we start with the area, A1. So area of the first one that is fifty plus twenty-five plus seventy-five and hundred fifty hundred three hundred three hundred twenty-five three hundred twenty-five. The second shape. Um, so let's just second shape. I bring that coefficient here. That is two times the area, and the area is 25 times 100. And with the third shape, that is 100 by 25. So, what about the yi, the centroid of each shape? The centroid of each shape, for the first shape, the centroid is 12.5, right? And centroid of the second shape, that is 50 plus 25, 75. And the Y bar for the third shape is minus 50. So you have to take the sign because now the reference is not right at the bottom. The reference is at here. So let's write down the AI Y bar I value here.
Okay, so this is um, tricky. Um, once you are calculating the Y bar, in the numerator, uh, you have this one as negative, but in the denominator, you add all the values. The, the areas are positive, but the product of A, I, Y, Y, the third one is negative. Because, because we, we took the reference here. Make sense? So if I want to write that, this is Y bar is something like this. Uh, let, let's write this down. That's Okay, it's a good idea someone do the same calculation also. I got 22.5. The same, the same, what, what did you get? 22.5. 22.5. Does that make sense? Nothing. Yeah, all right. It, it makes sense to be positive because everything is lumped over there. It could be a bit larger than 25. Let, let me. Okay, so that number, I make that reciprocal and multiply that by parenthesis 101562 plus 375000 minus one to five zero zero zero. I got twenty two point five, the same number. Yeah, that's right. Just this way doesn't make sense to get Yeah, yeah. Did you put them in Excel? No. Oh. Okay, so now we know the Y bar. Uh, the next thing is let's let's so this is misleading. That the shown thing here is misleading uh, because that line would be somewhere along here. This is Y bar. So now for the first shape, um, DI. For the first shape, DI is. 12.5 take away from that. Which is 10. For the second shape, um, that is 25 plus 50, 75. 75 take away from 
take away from 22.5 that is 52.5 and for the third area that is 50 plus that is 72.5 All right, the next thing is you find out AI DI squared and put it here. And then I bar, you put this here, that is 1 over 12. For the first shape, that is 25 multiplied by 325 cubed. And for the second shape, there are two of them. That is two times over 12. And B is 25, H is 100. 100 Q. And for the third shape, that is one over 12. B is 25 and H is 100. Okay, so all these values should be added together and for each the penalty is considered so here we get i is i1 plus i mean here we in, included coefficient two so that is i2 i don't multiply two i2 because this is accounted for for there plus i3 so when we calculated I2, it took two uh, components. So I think the solution in the slide, that 75 doesn't make sense. This is, has to be something different. All right, now, um, yes, to find out the, to find out the section properties, these are important. Also, internal forces, we know how to find them. Uh, once you find the center of area for a composite shape, that is where the neutral axis is. Neutral axis is when you bend the beam at the neutral axis, the fibers are neither under tension nor under compression. And you, you have to remember that three internal forces, uh, three internal forces, N, V, M, these are only function of X. But when you want to compare them, you have to, convert them in terms of the stress. And stress is intensity of the load divided by area. And there are two possibilities. You could have the load and area orthogonal. That makes a normal stress. You could have the load and area tangent that make a shearing stress. So example of a normal stress is in the bar, when you are pulling the bar, this is typical area, this is the force, the force is normal. If I make a section like so, at this section, the normal stress, I show that by sigma, and that is force divided by area. But if I have a 
lap joint and then I'm pulling this one at this particular area this is, this is the area so here my force and area are coplanar so here the stress is shown by a different symbol that is called toe toe is the same fa but in this case force and area are coplanar in terms of the normal we show that with the sigma the force is perpendicular so the unit for both of them is either newton per square meter which is called pascal or newton per square millimeter which is megapascal and right so next week we get into translation of these forces into stresses but just to give you uh, a sneak preview that one results into the shearing stress this one results into the normal stress right so due to the bending you gather you find a normal stress developed um, on the beam due to the shear you find a shear stress developing over here um in the unit guide we have the third practice scheduled for the week 11. i think week 11 is a little bit late for a practical because then week 12 is very hectic near the exam you might not be able to do it if you're happy i uh, would send an announcement and bring the lab to the next week that you should be able to do this i mean Wednesday is good for everyone because I have to give you a little bit of theory before we run the. So Wednesday, we will run this for Wednesday. Lab three would be Wednesday week 10. I send you an announcement for that. All right. So any question for today from pass or any matter you want to ask? All right, Nguyen is here, Aiden is here, and Ahmed is here, Nijil here, and Shah is here, Horthy here. All right. Thank, thanks very much, everyone. I look forward to see you next week. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, too. Ah, uh, from where? Uh, did Ershad told you about the garage sale I told him? Oh, yeah, I talked to him. Maybe he's going to buy it from there. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Is that good? Yeah, is that good? Yeah, Do you have it here? Yeah, yeah. So, how much you pay for this? Uh, I paid for this around 2000. No, this is brand new. This is brand new. This is brand new. I told him to go to that garage sale. Thank 
Yeah. Uh, and what are the problems of the people and talking to and what are the problems of the the discount, you buy them, you don't get to the red and stuff in it, you really put your money in it, it's making the world to more than a few companies. I mean, I had five more decisions here, a couple of other laptops, and then I put the down here, the same box was the other company. Second and third, three, 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 three,